I'm Tracy with MeetRx, and I'm here today with Holly, who's going to tell us all about her success story. Thank you for coming, Holly. How are you doing? Great. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So I would like to hear your whole story of how you used to eat before carnivore. And so could you start there? Tell me how you used to eat before carnivore and your health conditions before carnivore. Absolutely. Are you okay if I give just a little bit of context, like just like a second? <laughs> so yeah. like stories without context are, are hard to get into. So I'm 41 years old. I have been married for 21 years. I have four kids. They are 16, 15, 13, and 13. Yes, they're twins. Yes, they're identical. No, they don't run in my family. They're all girls. And no, my husband doesn't want the boy. He is worshipped in our house. What, like, I'm the one we should be worried about. So <laughs> I homeschool and I have for 11 years, I run a direct sales business in my home. And then I also have been a military spouse until last year for 20 years and a military brat. So I've lived in 14 different places in this whole world. So all over the map. So, um, Growing up, the way I ate was actually probably more healthy uh, at different times. My parents' first argument was in the grocery store. They got married when they were 18 and 19 years old, and my mom was putting in hamburger helper and macaroni and cheese because she was like an original latchkey kid before it was a thing. So that's how her mom cooked, and that's what she knew to cook. And my dad grew up with um, a, his dad, my grandfather, is like a gourmet chef by hobby. I mean, when we go there to eat, we eat homemade pasta with the flour that he ground from the thing and like just, you know, fish that he caught from the river yesterday. And we've never had mashed potatoes without celery root in there with a butternut squash like swirl. I mean, it's just like <laughs> blow your mind. Gourmet. So that's how my dad grew up eating. So my dad's throwing in fresh vegetables and meat and, you know, pasta. And my mom is sobbing because she has no idea how to cook those things. So all that to say that it balanced out to where like we did have macaroni and cheese in our home, but only when my dad was gone to the field with the military. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, it was like a special treat. And then when, you know, my dad was home, it was lots of uh, vegetables and meat, but also tons of bread and pasta and, and things like that. So that's kind of how I grew up. I was a really healthy kid, normal weight, no issues. Um, when I was younger, I got into my teens and this is like when the, the pieces started breaking and I just little bits at a time of my body. And I started to like, be like, Ooh, I'm lactose intolerant. Who knew? That's probably the gallon of milk I drank every day, skim milk. Cause you know, that was better. So <laughs> I, um, I just ignored it because when you're in your late teens, early twenties, you can have like health conditions and your body just kind of bounces a little bit better. And so I just, I knew I was lactose intolerant. So if I ate the pizza or drink the milk or ate the ice cream, I knew the next day I just going to have to deal. So that probably wasn't the wisest choice, but I mean, nobody's wise when they're in their teens, right? <laughs> so um, I also had some stress induced migraines when I was like 18, 19, 20. Um, they went away when the stress went away. It was just, I was working full-time, going to school full-time, had a full-time volunteer uh, job. I'm not sure how I did all of those, but obviously I didn't. I had headaches instead. <laughs> so those went away when those stressors went away, though. Um, they were very tied to that. I got married at 20. And between 20 and 25, it was just my husband and I. I loved to cook, but it was, again, lots of pasta. I did homemade sourdough with my starter. And um, I made homemade granola. And just, you know, I, I cooked a ton. So it wasn't unhealthy, you know, to, the, to someone looking on. But now I, now I know what I know and know I was breaking my insides severely. <laughs> so no major health issues between there. But at 25, I had my first kid. Um, and then 13 months later, I had my second kid. And then 14 months later, I had twins. <laughs> wow. So I, my poor, and, and the last two pregnancies, I was on birth control, which messes with your hormones. So my hormones were completely out of whack. Uh, and now, of course, I know this now, but in the moment, I was just like, I'm superwoman and very fertile. I obviously it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> so, um, all during those years, so all of my kids were born within a two year and three month period. When my oldest was two years and three months old, I had a 14 month old and newborn twins. So, all during that time, my husband was in and out of the country, deployed, gone. So, and, um, 
my family, like I said, I, my parents got married young and then I got married young. So like my parents still had real jobs that they had to go to and couldn't come live with me while my husband got out of the country and same with my husband's parents. I had an awesome military community, but between like 25 years old and 27 years old, my body was being rocked big time between extreme stress all the time. I'm for my military spouse, as you know, when your husband's deployed, it's a constant, like, you know, cloud like is he gonna be alive today or not and that sounds like trite and silly but i, I mean when your husband's in the desert you think those things <laughs> so then i had four babies at home or two or three depending upon you know whatever deployment it was um i had undiagnosed postpartum de depression for over a year uh when they did diagnose it they were like here's some prozac to maybe help you sleep i don't know um you really need to sleep and i was like well that's great but i have four babies so i can't sleep through babies crying it's me like i'm it <laughs> so I remember having uh, with my twins, you know, having like contractions early on and they were like, well, you need to stop lifting things. And I was like, you mean like these two babies over here, stop lifting that? Like, so I just, I, out of necessity and out of survival, I was in survival mode emotionally and physically for those years. All the things were breaking down. So between like 2004 and 2009 or 10, like my life is just a blur. I did blog and sometimes I'll go back and read it and I, that's just hard. <laughs> just rather just move on. Uh, and so between 2010, 2016, I did all the things to try because we, right, right up until 2010, I gained 90 pounds in my stress because food is the yummiest medicine in the whole world. <laughs> so it was always there for me. It never deployed. <laughs> it would have been nice if it did. So. I ate my stress and I ate my anxiety and frustration and sadness. I, I ate all the things. So I went from 175 pounds to, to at least 260, but then at some point I just stopped getting on the scale. So I'm one of those people that if I just don't think about it, it's not there and everything's fine. So um, at least 90 pounds, maybe more, but I just want to be transparent there that I stopped getting on the scale. <laughs> so. Between 2010 and 2016, I tried Weight Watchers. I tried being a vegetarian because that felt healthy. And, but also I couldn't have dairy. I was still lactose intolerant at this point. So it was like when you're vegetarian without being, uh, without having dairy that you just sub, you just sub that with lots of carbohydrates, lots of carbohydrates, beans and pasta. Um, Somewhere in there, I was, I like posted on Facebook, hey, I have some joint issues, which I'll go into in a second, and I'm in pain, and I can barely walk. Somebody give me a diet that, that like reduces inflammation. Like I, it was on my radar that inflammation was a thing. I didn't quite understand it, but I was so desperate and in pain that someone was like, oh, let's do some Whole 30s. So I did two Whole 30s, which are, there's two pivotal points in my story and the whole 30 is one of them. Like just reteaching my mind what good food was again, cause I grew up with like chef mentality, which isn't a bad thing, but you know, it, it was helpful, but learning what whole foods were versus just whole greens or, you know, things like that was pivotal. So I'm thankful for the whole thirties, but digestively I struggled through both of them. I mean, just, uh, I have extreme, sensitivity to spinach and eggs and didn't realize that. And I was downing massive amounts of spinach and eggs for my whole 30, cause that's what you do on a whole 30. <laughs> so I was in the bathroom like a lot. So I yo-yoed weight. I, I went from whole 30s to paleo. I decided to become a runner. I did couch to 5k and then I just kept going, but it wasn't like a healthy run. I describe it as a forest gum run. <laughs> like run away from your stress and problems. Like just go. I was running 25 miles a week on 90 extra pounds. I mean, and I would yo-yo weight. I would come in and out, in and out of the, I mean, I was successful with Weight Watchers while I was on Weight Watchers. I was successful with Whole30 while I was on Whole30. But as soon as I'd step out of something like that, um, it would all just come back on plus a little. <laughs> Always plus a little. I did hot yoga, like intense hot yoga every single day and then i would do the advanced one on saturday like i i was in pain and i was overweight and i knew i needed to do something so i had 
oh my gosh, because my hormones were all over the place, I had extreme anger issues and just mood swings. Like they were crazy. Um, almost out of body. Like I would see myself getting angry with my kids or my husband or just at the grocery store, somebody cut in front of me in line. How dare you? And I would just, it'd be out of body. Like I could see myself reeling and I'd be over here telling myself, Hey, like take a chill, like reel it back in. But I couldn't, you know, it was just uh, gone. My words wouldn't come out of my mouth with like conversations with friends. They were like thoughts in my mind were like in traffic stops and they just wouldn't come out and I'd be so sad over that and so frustrated. Um, I had itching on my inner thighs, which I Googled and Googled for hours and just couldn't ever find what was happening. And I mean, we're talking bleeding, keeping me up at night. I just extreme itching, not just kind of like, oh, that kind of itch. It's like, I can't stop. I know I'm bleeding. I know this is hurting me and it's such a deep itch. I can't stop. Um, my bowel mo movements were just, they were awful. They, <laughs> they were emergent. I, I had, I would like drive 15 minutes somewhere and I'd have to stop at a gas station before I got there because it was so always emergent to use the bathroom. Bowel, they were just never solid. They were always explosive. Um, I would, I would think about going on like road trips with my family and just start crying because my emotions are all over the place. Also, I was like, I don't know how I can physically do that between my uh, bowel movements being all over the place. And then because I ran like Forrest Gump, I had arthritis in both hips. I had bursitis in one hip and I had arthritis in the other hip. Hence the hot yoga and the whole thirties and paleos, which all helped a little bit, never like fully fixing anything. I'm super thankful for them and thankful for running and love the adrenaline and all of that. But it never, it was never healing to me fully, uh, just little bits and enough to just make me keep going a little bit. Um, I tried barefoot running because I heard that was good for your hips. And then I got plantar fasciitis because you probably shouldn't barefoot run if you're already inflamed. <laughs> so, so that plantar fasciitis lasted three years. And if you've had that before, you know, it's debilitating. You are not only is it debilitating, it's humiliating. You're crawling on your hands and knees to use the bathroom in the morning or at night. You can't stand in line at the grocery store because you have to kind of like squat down to stretch your calves out. I mean, it's just, oh my gosh, so life altering. I couldn't sleep at night, uh, but then I couldn't make it through the day without a nap either. And that was both emotional and physical. I, I had, I would have to like disappear from the world emotionally. I couldn't, I couldn't deal even if it was a good day. Um, I didn't realize this was happening until after I started eating carnivore, but I had thinning hair. I had bald spots. I have a lot of hair. So it, it kind of like hid. And I just like, was like, oh, I'm just 40. Like, I'm just thinning. <laughs> I just, but it was weird because neither one of my grandmothers or my mother or anybody in my family ever bald. Even the men all have a lot of hair. So I don't know why I rationalized that one away. That makes zero sense. <laughs> so constant obsession with food. Like I said, I medicated with food. I procrastinated with food. I was joyful with food. I was, it was very much an addiction and a worship of food. Um, same with sugar. And we all know that, uh, social anxiety. So I wouldn't have ever called myself socially anxious until now that I'm not looking back. I'm like, Oh, that's why my stomach hurt every single time I came home from a social uh, setting or Christmas with family members, or I would have to get in bed and just let this, my stomach muscles release because they were so tight. It was so painful. And it realized those were anxiety attacks. I just thought, everybody's probably in bed letting their stomach muscles, you know, relax. Isn't this just normal? <laughs> so <laughs> FYI, it's not normal. <laughs> so, and then just being in new situations, I would get really angry. And I, again, out of body, I'm like, why am I so angry that I knew I don't like, and as a military wife, I had lots of experience being new. So it was very in my face that I was like, I know that these people are so nice, but I'm so mad at them. And I don't even know them. <laughs> just, out of control anger and social anxiety. So 2016, here we are, we are, the itching is out of control. It is taking over all these other ailments and my hips still hurt, maybe not as often because I, I was, uh, had Trisha transitioned into paleo. I had, um, uh, you know, just kind of wasn't a hundred percent paleo cause I had a sugar addiction, but it was like 70, 30 paleo, but my 30% wasn't 
like other good carbs. It was cookies <laughs> or French fries or, you know, it wasn't like good carbs. It's the bad ones. So, um, the itching got so bad. A friend of mine that, uh, in a new town that I'd moved to was like, Oh, I go to this functional medicine doctor. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but maybe she'll know what my itching is. And I'm so thankful. Another pivotal point was going to see this functional medicine doctor. I only went in because I couldn't sleep at night because my thighs itched and then I was tired of them bleeding. And as with all good functional medicine doctors, who by the way, signs off on my carnivore, she's totally supportive, so awesome. Um, but she took an hour and a half with me and at, she was like, yeah, 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 itching. Okay, uh, how's your sleep? How's your mood? How's your bathroom? How's your, like, you know, all good functional medicine doctors get the whole story. She ordered one of these GI effects stool profile things that was so expensive. It was the most expensive way to back somebody into an elimination diet. You don't need this. <laughs> you just need to eliminate all the things. Right. Don't pay for this. Just eliminate and figure it out on your own. So, I mean, there, I needed it emotionally and just where I was. And so if you do need that kick in the rear, they're worth it. Um, it came back. And like I said, I'd been to other doctors and they told me, you're fine, your blood work's fine. And then you think you're crazy. You think it's all in your head or you just think you're getting old or I don't know, I just wrote it all off as like stress or, you know, oh, I have four kids that are, you know, two and a half years apart. Of course I'm stressed. Like, uh, but that is so, none of that is truth. All of that is, is our lie. They're total lies. So I um, had this GI effects and she, you know, a couple weeks later, the, the results are back. I sit in her office and she goes, wow, Holly, you are lit up like a Christmas tree. I'll never forget her voice. I'll never forget her face. I started, cause of course I have no emotional control. I started sobbing, like finally validated. I'm not crazy. I had malabsorption of all fats, which is why everything was an emergency to use the bathroom. I had no good bacteria, overgrowth of bad bacteria. I had a SIBO. I had um, no stomach lining. I was starting to develop ulcers. <laughs> so, I mean, just all of these things that blood tests are not going to show you. I'm not knocking blood tests. That my butt, She did a blood test also, and that showed adrenal fatigue. So I had all these vitamin deficiencies. I had over 40 food intolerances. Some of them were categories like dairy and soy and gluten and, you know, all the ones you can imagine. But then there were things on there like lettuce and cucumbers and superfoods like avocados and olives, which as, as a paleo, you know, like whole 30, man, I'd down, about, I'd down a can of olives as a snack. <laughs> like, oh, FYI, your body doesn't like that. So all I saw when she gave me my food intolerance was coffee and chocolate. Like you can't have those. Like they were just, they leaped off the page. And because I'm sugar addicted and food addicted, you were, and a cook who grew up in a family of gourmet chefs, like it was part of my identity to like feed people. Like people came to my house to eat. I was the cook for the fam for the parties. Like, you know, like my dad too. Like this is what we did as a family. We feed people. So it was part of my identity to eat all of these foods. So there was a huge identity crisis emotionally to like switch my mind to being around people. It doesn't have to equate food. It can just be them as a person, which was so freeing and a good healthy thing, <laughs> but it was hard. So, um, yeah, so those were a lot of my health conditions. Um, let me look at my notes here. Oh, so I did that and I, I took everything out, but I was allowed to have rice and I was allowed to have, you know, some things that the weight, so the weight would pack on. So I was experiencing healing in a lot of ways. I mean, within two weeks of eating off of this elimination diet, I was sleeping. Um, I was just a little bit more calm, not as emotionally balanced, but again, the same thing as the Weight Watchers and the Paleo and the Whole30, a little bit here and there was helpful. Um, but it was hard to stay on track because I'm food addicted and sugar addicted. So I, again, I was feeling better, but I was gaining weight. And then in other areas, I wasn't feeling as good, but I could make it through the day without a nap. And that was huge. Um, I, my words were starting to come out of my mouth not just stay in my brain, which was super <laughs> freeing. Um, and then I went in and I was like, I'm still having problems, my functional medicine. And she was like, why don't you try keto? And I was like, oh, that's a fad. Mm -mm. 
I'm not doing that. So I did. So it took me a while. Um, I went home uh, to my husband's family for a family event and like three of my sister-in-laws and I decided to do keto together. And it was wonderful. I downloaded the carb manager app on my phone and I tracked everything and I ate good whole foods. I stayed on my elimination diet while I did keto. So when, when you hear keto and I say keto, not the same thing, most likely. <laughs> there was no dairy. There was no processed anything. I couldn't just go buy a Quest bar because it had something in it I couldn't have. So, um, so I did. I lost 30 pounds again, and my, my inflammation and my joints went down a little bit to where I only hurt like when it rained or when it was a full moon or like a human barometer, <laughs> so, which is something that 80-year-old women can do and I shouldn't have been able to do. So um, so I did keto during my keto and my food intolerance thing. My husband comes to me, he's an avid Jordan Peterson listener. And he was like, yeah, Jordan Peterson and his daughter, Michaela. I mean, this was like a long time ago when all Michaela had was a blog, <laughs> a blog post. And I, I get on her blog and I'm like, wow, somebody else is as crazy as me. Like she can't eat all the things I can't eat, but I'm not doing what she's doing. Mm -mm, I'm not going to do that. So that was like a seed planted for carnivore. I never jumped. It was just in the back of my mind. And I started following Michaela. And then I found all the other people, you know, started following all the big names and just kind of like let myself research it and absorb it. So, so I have a question at this point. Yeah. What, um, why didn't you want to start carnivore then? Was it just because of the carbs or? Yeah, I think it had to do with, again, my identity of identifying with food and at least with my keto, even with my intolerances, I could still be creative and create things. <laughs> so, um, and it also had to do with food addiction. On keto, you can have sweet things and yeah. you, can, you can get away with erythritol and stevia and monk fruit. Like, I mean, and I was pretty good at it, so. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of treats on different keto. Yeah, they look good. Oh, but... many. I mean, and I would do that for breakfast. I'd have my, you know, bulletproof coffee with my six almond flour cookies. Like that, there's nothing healthy about that. And then wonder why my digestion was messed up. Huh. Could it be the 50 almonds I just ate? I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I think that not doing it was still just a hold on that addiction, the sugar and the identity, all extremely difficult. So I let it simmer. My gym here in town that I go to was doing a transformation challenge in January of 2020. And I don't know what possessed me. I, it was just time. I was like, okay, I've tried the keto. I've gone, oh, and I got tired of tracking keto because I just get exhausted tracking every little thing I eat. It becomes almost more consuming than the food addiction. And then I don't, I forget that there's people in front of me that day, or I forget to do things that day because I'm so obsessed with tracking things or, if, or feeling guilty for not tracking things. Or I obsess over the fact that I ate that chocolate chip cookie, but I don't want to put it in my carb manager app. So it's fine. I'm just going to run extra tomorrow. And I would try to make up for it with exercise, which was super awesome on a broken body. And <laughs> So I don't know, it was just time. January, 2020, it was an eight week transformation challenge. There was money involved. You could win a prize if you lost a certain amount of weight. And I was like, I am gonna win that money. Um, I didn't, but it's okay. <laughs> I won so much more. So I started and I was like, I'm just gonna do carnivore for eight weeks because it's too crazy of a lifestyle for well, me. That's impressive that, that, that the gym had a carnivore thing. No, nope, it was just, you choose your own diet. Oh, okay. They did not know. I think some of them were doing a whole 30 together. Uh, but other than that, it was just like you weigh in, you come work out, you, you do your own diet at home, but whoever loses the most weight wins. Oh. <laughs> and it was based on body fat percentage. Well, I'd already been working out for years and years. I never struggled working out. I actually need to, or I wear out the people around me. <laughs> so I was already lifting. So I did, my body fat percentage wasn't, you know, off enough to go, you know, win this challenge. So anyway, it was not a carnivore thing, but it was good. It was what I needed my kick in my pants. And I did it very quietly because I knew it would be really controversial at my gym. Like, oh, you need vegetables. And I was like, yeah, but my test says that I don't like vegetables. <laughs> so, so, um, I lost 13 pounds in eight weeks. 
I immediately started, I still hadn't been sleeping. Uh, all like my sleep would ebb and flow. I'd have like a week of great sleep and then three weeks of terrible sleep. And I just would blame it on my husband's sleep issues. <laughs> now I know <laughs> wasn't. And <laughs> so, um, I, my sleep so I started noticing new baby hair come in after eight weeks I had looked pregnant for 15 years I just thought oh it's because I was pregnant for two and a half years and women's stomachs just do that they just look pregnant after they're pregnant um that's not true either my stomach just like went back where it was supposed to go it was the most crazy crazy thing um my jawline changed there was so much body composition change and then I started getting compliments like, Holly, I just like, your eyes are sparkling or like, I can hear a lilt in your voice. Like, yeah. and I was like, wow. And you know what? I haven't like angrily exploded in like eight weeks. Like I, I didn't eat. So a lot of my health issues that I named at the beginning of this interview, like I didn't even know were health issues until they were gone, which yeah. is Oh my gosh, if you're thinking about starting carnivore or if you just started, I would say just, I journaled through the whole thing. Like I journaled every single day, real quick, nothing crazy. Um, but it was so powerful to look back and be like, oh, I, I didn't even realize I'd stopped itching. The itching took a while. Um, I know now that it was a histamine response, but uh, that's hard to Google. <laughs> so I, um, and that's self-diagnosed. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I, that's just self-diagnosed. But I um, stopped itching at about the five month, five to six month. I just, I would, I, it just disappeared from my journaling. So that's when I'm guessing it stopped. And um, for me not to realize that it went away, it was debilitating. So I, it had to be a slow progression because I didn't realize it was even going away. <laughs> so my, I don't know when it's going to rain anymore and I don't even know when it's a full moon anymore. So I'm, I have to actually look on an app to figure that stuff out because now my hips don't hurt. Plantar fasciitis is completely gone. I can wear whatever shoes I want, whenever I want. Um, my, uh, my stomach issues are still healing. I will say though that I started having like with my lactose intolerant when I was like 16, 17, 18. So that is a really old injury and it's getting exponentially better but I'm also just being patient and realistic with that that when I have a 20 year old injury it's not going to heal itself in seven months um but I'm super happy with the progress I've made it's now no longer emergency uh my family and I took a trip this summer we weren't you know you're not supposed to but we did anyway <laughs> we sat in the car for 12 and a half hours and uh for those of you who have hip bursitis that's not possible without extreme pain. So not only did I not have to use the bathroom in an emergency way anytime during our trip, my hips didn't hurt sitting in a car for 12 hours. And when we got to where we were going, I cried thankful and happy tears because I just, it was just this overwhelming thankfulness. So I hit the end of my eight weeks. I'm skipping ahead, but I hit the end of my eight weeks and I was like, oh, this is way easier than I thought. This is the most simple, um, like e e I keep saying easy, but it's just easy to eat this way. And it, it doesn't seem like that on the onset. Cause you think you're giving up and you are, you're giving up so many things, but you're giving up the things that are trapping you, but you don't realize that when you're stepping into it. So just giving up the things that trap you and then not having to think all the time, what am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? Like, you're going to eat some beef and that that's the end of the story. I can go to restaurants now so much easier than I could before. Um, I can, I've gone back to actually tolerating a little bit of dairy, not a lot, but just a little bit. It's a treat. <laughs> so again, my, my intestines are still, they're still crawling back up to healing. So, um, so yeah, so imp, I guess that's implement. Well, that's not implementing it. I don't know. What's next? <laughs> Well, you, you're covering many bases. I, um, I wondered if your intolerance to dairy, you know, have you ever tried raw dairy at all? Yes, um, I can do a little bit. And I would get raw milk for my girls. I, was, I have a drop and a pickup that I do here in town of raw milk. And he does some raw cheese. And I think because I struggled for so many years eating dairy, I'm probably fine. and don't have an intolerance to it anymore. It's extremely mental. Like, if I eat that or drink that, I'm not going to feel good. And so I've told myself that, and then I don't feel good. 
but I'll go out to eat and get a steak and ask for blue cheese on my steak and then I'm fine. So, or I only get cheese when I go out to eat. So like I'll get the burger patties with the cheese and that's my treat when we go out to eat because I don't, then I don't feel like I'm missing out on the French fries or the Dr. Pepper or the whatever. I got cheese. <laughs> so it's a, I use dairy as a, a mental thing. And then I figure when I'm at home, it's fine. I'm not wasting my calories or my, you know, uh, full factor, my satiating on cheese. I'm just filling up on mostly beef. So. Awesome. Yeah. So you, um, what's a typical day look like for you? Like, do you eat just one meal a day? Do you fast or anything like that? I, I don't purposely fast, but I accidentally fast every day. And <laughs> like, but I, because I don't moderate well, I like to eat everything all the time. Uh, fasting is hard on me mentally. So I eat when I'm hungry. So I have done one meal a day twice. I look back at my journal preparing for this and I was like, oh, I've done it twice. <laughs> um, yes. And it was never, it wasn't intentional. It wasn't like I got up that morning and thought I'm going to eat one meal today. It was probably a busy day. And I probably just packed two pounds of meat in and at one meal and then got busy and, um, of course, that was before the world shut down when I was busy. <laughs> so, during the world shutting down, I eat twice twice a day. Um, I, I wake up at like five in the morning and I drink a cup of coffee. I do drink coffee and I do, full disclosure, drink full fat coconut milk. Again, because I have a psychological thing with dairy um, and it's just pure coconut milk by itself. So I put that in my coffee. I drink that at 5 a.m. I go work out. I work out fasted. Uh, that's going to be debatable whether you think I'm fasted or not, but in my world, I'm fasted. <laughs> so then I come home and usually around 10 or 11, I'll have another cup of coffee with the coconut cream and either bacon or rendered um, beef fat. I just chop it up and put it in my air fryer. I um, am playing around with that right now, like signaling to my body, hey body, we're going to use fat today. And so I'm just going to, you know, introduce fat as my first meal. And then that's what we're going to, we're going to burn fat today. Just, and it's actually been really um, peaceful on my intestines. So I really like that. And then um, somewhere around four or five o'clock, I'm hungry. So I will, and that's when I pull out the beef and I'll eat anywhere from one pound to two pounds of uh, ribeye, chuck roast, or um, hamburger patties. So my husband uh, and I will like on a Saturday or Sunday, just cook tons of meat so that it's readily available. And I can just pull, um, I, I just, you know, I just love Kelly Hogan and I will take my meat cookie and I will frost it with bacon grease. And I keep my bacon grease on my counter and I frost my meat cookies um, or I'll frost, shoot, I'll frost a ribeye sometimes <laughs> with bacon grease. So I'm playing around with a little bit heavier fat. So my protein is down a little bit, which I think I was ready for body composition wise. Um, I'm stuck at the same weight for like a month, but I do take my own personal progress pictures. I don't post those and I can tell a huge difference, even though the scale is the same. So that was a long answer to, I eat twice. I eat a lot of fat and I eat mostly beef. <laughs> yeah. I love Kelly Hogan too. Yes. It sounds like you really have changed your relationship with food and that's really where it's at. You really have to change your relationship with food and understand that food is fuel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it should be enjoyed, no doubt, but. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Awesome. I do not have the same relationship with food. Yeah. <laughs> so at, at all, I, days I did one meal a day, I would like at the end of the day and be like, because it wasn't purposeful, I'd be like, huh, that is so weird. I've never forgotten to eat ever. <laughs> like, how did I forget to eat? Like, it, just, it was fun, confusing, and freeing. I feel very, very, I feel like someone let me out of a prison. Wow, that's awesome. And you don't have to count anymore? Oh my gosh. Uh, when I tell people, I'm like, look, you don't got to track nothing, <laughs> nothing. You can if you want, that's your jam. Like, and you like that, some people like that, but I, I become obsessed with it and then I get emotional and guilty over it. And again, it's just a prison to me, so. Does your, family, does your family like carnivore? Do they eat a lot of meat? Yeah, so my husband eats probably, he would say like 70% carnivore, 
And then his other 30% though are things like berries and uh, you know, someone made homemade sourdough bread and he ate it once a month or his 30% is very healthy broccoli. Like, <laughs> um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, he is very meat based. And then probably I would call him paleo and his other 30%. Um, I know sourdough is not paleo, but you know what I mean? And then my girls, my four teenage girls all are in different places, but it's fun to watch that. And I didn't raise them this way. So expecting them to switch now is difficult, but it's fun to watch. They've seen me. They, they are privy to the emotional changes, you know, upfront and personal. And they, they are loving it for me. They're loving it for my husband. And so they themselves are starting to become way more meat-based, which makes our Saturday and Sunday meat cooking sessions huge. <laughs> so, so they now have transitioned to, they'll pull out a burger patty and they put cheese on it and stuff, but they'll eat like two burger patties for lunch. That's, that's what their lunch is. It's balanced with the fact that they had a bagel for breakfast, but I still, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds great actually. Yeah. So you have healed all your conditions, except maybe your stomach a little bit? Did you I would say that's the only one. My hair's all come back. My fingernails are growing. I didn't realize that that was a symptom. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. I just thought I had short fingernails. I, my emotions, I always tease, like, I just thought I was a lot. Like, I just thought I had a big personality. And I'm like, I do, but now it's fun, as yeah. opposed to, like, angry and frustrated. And, you know, so, uh, yeah, my stomach is still... Uh, playing catch up, but again, I'm cool with where it's at and it is healing uh, huge improvements. So I'm excited to see that continue to heal. That's wonderful. I love hearing your story, Holly. I know a lot of people will get a lot of benefit out of it. I, I so. thank you for, for sharing it with me and for sharing it with MeetRx and the community, of course. And I am, um, I don't know if there's anything extra that you wanted to add, but I think that you have done a, a tremendous job and it, it sounds like you're well on your way, seven months and that's awesome. I can't wait for a year. <laughs> I'm gonna celebrate. Oh, I will add one thing. I did at my six month, I, there was this little restaurant my husband and I used to go to every Sunday afternoon because they did $2 street tacos and $3 margaritas. And so I thought, you know, because I've heard other carnivores say, like, live your life. Like, you don't have to do this so dogmatic. Like, if there's a social situation or a celebration, you know, live your life. And I thought, I wonder if I could do that. <laughs> so I went and I had those dang street tacos. I had four of them. They're a little bitty. I had four of them and I had a margarita and I itched my thighs all night long. Six oh. months into carnivore. I finally stopped itching. And, and so it was, which sounds terrible, but I was so thankful. I was like, yep, this, this really did heal that. This really did take away those, uh, you know, responses that my body was having to who the heck knows what oxalates, lecithin, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I will add that, but I, I did test it out. I tried it and, uh, this is the way I need to eat right here. <laughs> Confirmed it. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, I've heard that story so many times where somebody tried something and I was like cringing when you said that. I was like, yeah, oh, like, oh what's going to happen? happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's really, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. But I do thank you for coming and sharing your story. And it's, it's just wonderful. I love how well you've healed and your family is all involved. And it's just tremendous. It's fun. Thank you, thank you so much, Holly. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye. Thank you.